Hey folks, my name is Kevin and it's time for a little bit more knife nerdery. And today we're unboxing a budget knife and there's not usually a lot of those on this channel, but we've seen a couple recently. Usually it's because they're doing something either really well or something that's kind of new. And so in the case of the Artisan Knives, uh, Cerberus Knives collab, Artisan Cutlery, yeah, there we go. This is the small Arian. What they're doing really well is this gorgeous burgundy micarta and this really spectacular flicking action. It's just really, really easy to flick and really good closing action. So that's great, showed up. Uh, similarly, the Cavist Blade Works, uh, yeah, Variant PE. What they're doing is a relatively novel handle shape with some cutouts that I really want to see if it works well. And then they're just, oh my God, the action on this. This is so incredibly buttery smooth. It flicks so effortlessly. And if you actually try, man, you get a nice one. And so, yeah. So every now and then budget knives show up. And what we have here today is a budget knife that I bought off of Kevin. Now, Kevin left EDC. He originally tried to give this to me because he's a crazy person, but the kind of crazy that ends up with a lot of generosity. So yeah, um, I ended up paying him something for it, but it was kind of a nominal fee. So huge thank you to Kevin for sending this my way and for the generosity, of course. Let's get this open. Okay. It feels like there's something else going on in here. Am I making that up? Oh my God. <laughs> I knew there was something else going on in here. So what we have here is the Civivi Knives Altus, but he threw in just a bunch of stuff. What is all of this? So first of all, we've got We've got the stickers because the stickers. Oh, cool. Some from Brent, Backpack B. <laughs> Shadow Rangers Club. That's the, the club that Kevin and a couple other people created to memorialize the Shadow Ranger knife, the ultimate survival tool. Oh my God, what is this? What did he send me? <laughs> okay, so... We've got some Gunny Glide and KPL Heavy, because why not? Um, that's awesome. I don't actually have either of these, and I've always wanted to check this out. And uh, and I've I've uh, yeah. I'm just going to pause for a moment. What I typically use is these three things. So I've got standard KPL, and then I've got Nano Oil in the ten and the 85 weight. So this would be the equivalent kind of of KPL and KPL heavy, but I've got regular KPL and KPL heavy is actually, I think 75 weight. And so I've never actually gotten to try them. And uh, Kev is a huge proponent of this stuff, not because he thinks it's like the best thing. No, not me. So let me rephrase that. Not because it's like the stuff that he gets for free frequently because they they, they uh, sponsor his lives, but because it legitimately works really well. So he recently tried nano oil and partly because folks like me talk about it, I he tried it on his own, I'm not the reason. Um, and he said his conclusion basically is that it works about as well. He's not, he, in some cases, he thinks it maybe works a little better, maybe not. Um, but the big thing is that nano oil is more expensive. And so since KPL still works about as good, um, why spend the extra money? I personally like nano oil better because it doesn't have any odor to it. And I'm one of those weird people that smells my knives. Um, what I've never used is Gunny Glide. And this is the kind of like darling at the time and in the you know community right now. And I've always wanted to see if it's worth any hype. So that's an incredible surprise. And then he's also just threw in some of these other goodies. So these are KPL's little cleaning picks. I typically use a toothpick and a Q-tip. And this is basically a toothpick turned into a q-tip so i totally see the appeal of that um <laughs> these are uh, rust prevention tabs so these are little uh, moisture absorbing tabs so these basically work as like solid uh disc forms or disc is probably a wrong word solid tab form of like a silica gel packet and so you put them in your case or in your your um your drawer, however you, however you store your stuff, and they absorb moisture and prevent rust. Um, that's really cool. <laughs> and then there's even more stuff in here. Okay, so that's finally the last thing in here. What is this? This is one of those nebula. Oh, right, yeah, okay. So this is, so um, Issuing Stitches is a Hank company that I think Kev got turned on to as part of 
a giveaway, maybe the Knife Rights giveaway? I don't remember, but he said that they were fantastic, and so he ended up getting a bunch, um, and I think he ended up getting some for free. I don't really remember how it worked, but he is trying to spread that love out into the world, and so... My first time holding one of these. These are all unexpected additions to this video. This feels pretty nice. I happen to have here one of my uh, Renegade Provision Co. wool hanks, and there are definitely differences you'll see right off the bat. So like the complexity of the stitching here, this is a relatively straightforward line stitch go as you go, and this is like a complicated zigzag stitch with fancy corners. Um, and then the both have microfiber, yeah, and what I, basically here's where I'm kind of landing in my gut reaction to this. This is kind of the premium hank on the market as far as I'm concerned. There might be folks doing as good of a job, but I don't really know and I can't really imagine how anyone would do a better job. And this is, I think, probably going to be your mid-range hank. You definitely get more space there. Um, but where, like, the, the fanciness of this is not anywhere near the level of this and just like the thickness and everything like that. But this is doing actual microfiber on the back that feels nice and soft, whereas a lot of places are just gonna be cotton cloth on both sides. And so they're doing things that are at that kind of more premium range. Um, and so that's, I, yeah, I think this is probably gonna be like a, a really solid mid-range Hank. Um, I, I've been, I never thought I'd be a Hank person, but I've been using these um, to clean my glasses because this is really, really nice that uh, optical grade microfiber, but I've also been using them to wipe down blades before I shoot these videos. And I think I will absolutely um, use this for this purpose. Uh, we'll see, if I end up not using it, I'll just include it in a giveaway at some point. I might just end up doing that. In fact, I should probably ask Kevin to see if there's a reason he sent me all of that other than just his generosity, because maybe I'm supposed to include it in a giveaway. Let's finally, seven minutes in, uh, past all that unexpected stuff. Thank you, Kevin. That's ridiculous. Again, I, I, I didn't even know this was happening, and I let in with that same intro that he's a crazy person, but the kind that, that results in a lot of generosity. But anyway, let's finally get to this knife. Okay, this is a Civivi, like I said, this is the Civivi Altus, and the reason why I wanted to check this out is because it's doing something kind of new. It's not truly outright new in the regard, but what it's doing is a budget knife version of a button lock, and something that it might be doing pretty novel, like I just don't know what you don't really see regardless, because there are other budget button locks that have preceded this, is a thumb stud button lock. You just don't really see that very often. They tend to be flipper tab. And so ah, I, I, when I saw this come out, um, announced by Civivi, I immediately thought that this would be a really big hit for them, because the, the, the previous two versions they've tried to do of this, um, of a button lock knife, where the button lock elementum, which makes a lot of sense if you um, if you aren't a knife person, because it's it's something that locks in both the closed and open position. So if you're someone that doesn't understand knives and you want a knife that feels very safe to you and you know it's not going to open, and you open it with two hands and it feels really safe to you, you know it's not going to close. Yeah, I hear that not knife people actually really like that knife. And then they did the uh, cogent, which was their first, I think, I think their first um, button lock knife that had an actual kind of like detent system, but that one was like a really big and kind of tactical looking knife. And so this is the one that I really wanted to know, what is the action going to be like? That actually feels fantastic. Wow. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So, um, the nature of how, how button lock uh, detent knives work. They don't have a detent ball the same way. There's this little um, pillar right here. And it's going to be really hard to show this in it. If you look at the shape that it's going into right there, yeah, that's going to be really hard to show it. If you look at the shape that's going into right there, there is a like a, a angle on that system. And what that means is that this pillar here that sticks up is traveling up a ramp in this locked position. So rather than a detent ball um, running up the side of a detent hole, like, or I guess maybe the edge of the tang running up the side of the detent ball, you have the uh, 
a ramp cut into the the knife blade running up the side of this pillar column thing. And so it's actually similar to the way that a regular detent works, but because of the fact that they have to be wide, um, because it's basically the column of this thing, I don't know, doesn't, I'm going into too much detail here and it's something that I don't really fully understand super well. Um, but because of that, it's hard to make it have the kind of crispness of a regular detent ball. They tend to be a little bit mushy, and this one isn't really mushy. This is more on the side of like a medium detent, but it's not actually, it still has like a reasonably real break. And the result is you get to flick that really, really well. And part of that is that you, you get, um, you have the ability to kind of just push up. So the positioning of this de this uh, thumb stud here is pretty far in and, and um, lower down like this. And so since you're close into the pivot, you can kind of just do a upward pushing momentum and get a lot of uh, follow through. And that really actually feels really good. I'm legitimately impressed by this. So the only real thumb uh button lock knives ish and button button lock and button lock adjacent things I've had are these. Um, I've got a couple of different versions of this and this is the Malibu. So this is the only really truly comparable and this is an actual plunge lock. So when I, when I say plunge lock, I'm talking about that same mechanism here where there is a thing right there that plunges down. And over here, this looks and acts just like a button lock because you're pushing down on a button that submerges. This is the Spyderco smock, but this is really just an inverted, well, flipped mirrored compression lock. So this is a compression lock in the standard Spyderco sense where it's like that bar pops up over front, but that bar just has a, a button attached to it. So this is not a, a plunge lock, but I really end up, I mean, between having these two knives, I really like button locks as a, a uh, like a, just a general form factor because I find that it's, it's a pretty like, intuitive and use like nice way to to, to operate a, a knife it keeps your fingers out of the blade path you're not having to push anything over here you're not trying to have to like crimp your finger in the way you would on a normal compression lock it's just a really intuitive way of doing a knife um, but something that i know right off the bat that i like better about this one versus this one is that this one sticks out and so as a result when you're actually in this locked position it sticks out quite a lot and so I've, I've always been kind of annoyed. It's one of my only real pet peeves about, well, there's a couple of others, but I love this mock. And my only real pet peeve is that this thing sticks out so far. Um, and over on the Malibu, everyone's darling, it stays completely flush. And so I've always thought that this was just a significantly better way of doing a button lock is having this recession carved into the handle around it um, so that you can still push down easily. You're not like pushing into a little hole. Like if you look at some of the other budget uh, button locks that have come out since this, they'll, they'll have a flush button perhaps, but they won't have this cutout around it. So you have to kind of like push your wedge, your finger down in. But we have that exact same thing happening over here where we have this cutout around it and it stays flush. And I think that is exactly the right move. Um, one of the things that made the Malibu so uh, noteworthy is that it had this really crisp action still. For a button lock, this is exceptionally crisp. And for a standard knife, well, across any kind of locking things, this is still pretty crisp. Like this is actually still a pretty crisp break. And so you get this just really, really delightful snappiness to it. But the other thing that's really great about button locks and the same thing you get over here is that be because you're able to fully press over the the lock bar, or I mean, so, yeah, the lock, yeah, because you're able to press over the thing that would cause friction when it's falling, um, you can you can make it so that it's, it literally has like no friction besides what would be the rolling friction of the bearings. So these kinds of knives tend to be extremely free falling because on any other knife you would have that lock that like lock bar pressing on the blade that whole time and adding friction. So if I let off of that and I see how close how much how easily this closes, it's still very a low friction knife and it's got a long enough blade that it still works really well, but it's nothing compared to the guillotine action of when I just press that. Similarly, and it just, yeah, it just falls so easily. Whereas if I put this and leave my finger off of that, it, you know, it still falls really well because of good alignment and everything like that uh, and low friction, but it does definitely have some friction. 
let's see how well they do with that over here. So if I push on this, yeah, it just falls. Oh yeah, absolutely effortless. And then if I, how would it have been if it, if, it, if I leave that off? Actually, that's still incredibly smooth. It's certainly less smooth than those other two. It's requiring a little bit more shaking to go down. Um, uh, but it's it's really easy. But the thing about these button locks is because of how natural it is to press this in, it's just the kind of thing where you don't ever really take this and then take your thumb off part way through. You're never going to encounter this experience that I'm showing right there because you'll just always do that. So how easy is this to do that? That's really easy. How easy is this to do that? So one of the reasons why I'm, why I'm showing that is because one of the reasons why people love Malibu so much is because it has this like really fidget ability factor. You can just kind of get into this like flick routine. And it's just so, it's so easy to kind of just hold it like this and never kind of really have to move your hand around in order to play with it. I think you are by definition having to do more motion here because the thing that you are unlocking it with is the same thing that you're deploying it with. But it's still, it's still very easy and fun to flick, uh, to play with and fidget with in that sense. And the reverse flick I think is very, very easy. So part of the reason why I think this was going to be a really big hit for them is because it's just a more neutral blade shape. If you look at the uh, cogent that they did first, it's it's just a significantly more tact tactical looking knife. And the things that hit really, really big as hits for um, Civivi tend to be things like the... Um, Elementum, which is, you know, a very kind of bland knife. It's it's bland in a way that makes its mass market appeal. It's not scary to people. And what we have here is certainly more tactical looking, especially with the all blacked out handle um, and, and everything like that. And just like the significantly pointier looking blade, it's more tactical looking, but this is still a relatively neutral looking knife. And like, this looks more tactical, but I don't think if you pull this out, someone's gonna be like, oh my God, what is that? They're gonna do that even less if you have something like this that's more blobby shaped, and especially if you have a version with wood handles like I do. But this is still not like a scary looking knife by, at least I don't think so. Um, one thing that right off the bat, just holding these two side by side, this feels like it weighs like meaningfully more. Not It's not heavy, but like this version that I have, is about as light as an elementum can get. This is my version of my Frankenstein elementum where I try to make the best possible elementum for me that I could. This is the thinner S35VN blade instead of the thicker D2 blade, and it's the uh, the lightweight uh, Babinga scales. So everything about that makes this, I think like 2.3 ounces, and this with full G10 and just being a thicker everything. It's not a thick blade stock, but this is 0.1 the regular one is 0.12. This is, I think, right in the middle at 0.11. And then everything about this is just thicker and bigger. So I think this weighs like a little bit over three ounces. And so that's not bad, but it does put you just over that ounce and inch mark because this is, I think, a three inch blade. Actually, something that really bugs me about this is I think this is just over a three inch blade. I'm pretty sure they list this as something like 3.05 or something that is completely doesn't need to happen. Like we don't need to to play with that legality problem, but they did it anyway. But yeah, this definitely just feels like it has more weight to it. It also feels a lot thicker in hand. Like I said, this is the one with the thinner S35VN uh, blade. So it's going to be the thinnest possible version of the Elementum. But uh, yeah, that's just significantly more. I think this is 0.42. 0.42 inches. And I think this is like probably, I think it's exactly a half an inch is what they say. And so, yeah, it's just meaningfully thicker, but you know, I'm not going to say it's like a thick knife. It's not, it's just not thin. So how does this actually feel? Wow. I'm this far into it and I'm not, I'm just now finally feeling ergos. Um, I mean, you're going to feel this clip. You just always, these kind of clips will, oh, actually, you know what? That's an interesting thing. This is the, 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 like the kind of standard Civivi, uh, deep carry clip. It's it, it, there's been a lot of variations of that over the time, but they just kind of look like this. And in fact, if you buy one of their, um, 
if you buy one of their like clip sets after market, you'll get this. Like you can buy on Amazon for five bucks a pack of two clips, and you know it's basically the same thing. It's a little bit longer, and it's um has an extra slot there. But this is the general look, and this sure looks similar. But look at that; it swoops up and doesn't come back down. So the reason why a clip like this comes back down is to make it so you don't have a jabby spot in your hand when you hold it, when you pinch down. And that's something I no immediately started noticing when I held this, that this just presses into my hand more. Well, that is disappointing. I'm surprised that they would revert their clip design that they have used for so long to give it a jabby spot that they knew to take away. Um, this is doing the kind of thing where it's got the uh, countersunk screws, but not the recessed clip itself and that's the same thing that you'll have like here on the elementum um, but a lot of knives will do it like this so when i used aftermarket screws not actually aftermarket i think these are the screws that came on the original clip uh, but you know a lot of knives will have this setup where neither thing is focus where neither is countersunk and since this one's a little bit lower to begin with you can see that there's just not a ton of clearance right here and that's what people really should care about like if you compare these two, this one has uh, stuff in the way right here, but what you're really having is less and less clearance at the top where your pants are thick. And so this one, if you look, it looks even thicker, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks like it has even just a little bit, a little bit more clearance. It's very minor. But so the thing that I, I you know, people sometimes like gripe the fact that this clip isn't recessed, but Honestly, it doesn't really matter. Like, like this isn't a big deal because your pocket's gonna go right in there. And it, I mean, it's an aesthetic thing. It's, it's almost exclusively an aesthetic thing at this point. It's not really a functional thing anymore because this is such a, a negligible difference about that little tiny, you're not gonna get hung up on that. But yeah, I do not like seeing that because uh, yeah, the moment I start holding it as my hand, I feel that clip more than I do on some other knives. Part of what also is going on there, uh, on the Elementum, the Elementum, its its back is just taller. And so if you think about where this clip is and relative to the ends of this and what this looks like from this dimension, my hand is able to kind of wrap around this and be sheltered by or like supported by these two parts on the side. And so it's never really pressing too hard onto this because it's kind of, it's doing it's doing that, you know? It's getting, it's getting support on all sides. Whereas if I if you look at this, I'll just close this so I'm not poking down. This is so much thinner back here. Let me show you side, side by side. This is so much thinner overall. And it's so much closer to the edge. And it comes, like here, that's another good point. This comes, like, there's still knife sticking up above this, above these two sides. And this... The knife, the clip is actually sticking up higher than the side of the handle right there. And so as a result, unlike the Elementum, on this, my, not, my hand isn't really being supported on either side. This is kind of the entire thing that it's touching. And so I definitely feel this back corner a heck of a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that a lot more. But at the end of the day, I like deep carry clips and I will still trade off that clip for um, for for rather than having something that is shallow carry because this is not, it's less comfortable, but it's not actively uncomfortable. Ergos in general actually feel pretty darn nice. Like one of the things you get from this thicker um, overall handle is that you get the ability to do this kind of slope right here. This uh, Elementum is so thin that if they tried to mill those kinds of lines into this, you just wouldn't really have enough material for it to work. But this, the scale material itself is like practically twice as thick if you look at the overall. It doesn't quite look like it in my camera, but if you were to measure it, I'm sure it's, you know, at least close to that. And so as a result, they have enough material that they can do this contouring, and that contouring actually feels really, really good in my hand. My finger wraps down around that in this grip like you would want, and up in that dimension. Yeah, that feels really, really good. Okay, what else are they doing here? This plunge grind is done exceptionally well. So what we have, the plunge grind is the grind that is 
takes the full thickness of the blade stock down to the thinnest behind the edge, and you can see that it ends all the way up here at the very top of this. So while this isn't a tremendously deep sharpening choil, you have the entire length of it, and you're not gonna get any smiling as you come up it. Now, they could have done it even more aggressively. You can see this is the kind of thing where it's basically a flat uh, surface. It's, 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 there's some amount of radius to it, but it's almost a completely flat surface right there. And if they'd done a more aggressive straight down plunge, then you would have an even uh, slightly more space. But if you look, like it's really not coming down much at all. So yeah, that's actually pretty darn good. Um, I'm finding that these thumb studs catch my finger in a way that gives them really good grip, but kind of it roughs it up a little bit. What I'm noticing is that this edge right here, this last tiny little bit, is a pretty crisp, sharp 90 degree angle. And like I said, it gives me really good traction, but I can feel it like kind of scraping on my finger in a way that I think isn't necessary. And the reason why I think it's not necessary is because this really good groove that I just mentioned, it comes down deep enough, you actually have the ability to push on the side of this thumb stud just fine. And so you need that kind of like traction based grip on top of a thumb stud, really only if you can't get underneath that thumb stud and push on the side of it, if you're relying on traction to pull you over. And I don't think this really is. And so I think this is a little bit more aggressive of a thumb stud than it needs to be, but that might be leaning to what a potentially a little bit more of a tactical use option. Like this does look kind of tactical. And so as a result, maybe they do intend for this to be something that you would wear uh, gloves with or that you would, I don't know, that you really are wanna, you'd be using this in a situation where you might have wet hands or something, and maybe that would make an impact. This jimping is actually pretty good. It's not my favorite kind of jimping, um, but it's effective. It would work better if it wasn't quite so spaced out, but it's got, uh, it's very shallow and it's got crisp edges. And those are the two main things that make jimping good or not. Uh, shallow jimping with crisp edges means that you can push down on it all you want. Well, good for normal hands that aren't wearing gloves at that moment kind of thing. If you're wearing gloves, you're gonna want it a little bit deeper because you want your glove to kind of dig into it more. But if you just have using it with your bare hands, shallow jimping with sharp edges is the kind that allows you to push in hard and not dig into you because you, your finger can't push in deep enough for it to hurt, but it gives you that crisp lineup that gives um, that traction on your, and your, your thumbprint right there. That means that he locks you in. So this is actually pretty good jimping. And because it's not a liner lock, you don't have to deal with any of this bullshit. I hate, hate, hate this jimping on, and this, in particular, this is the worst jimping on any liner lock. Uh, it's just, it's sloped in the wrong way. It's just, it's just terrible. And so you don't, because there is no lock that they're trying to give you access to right there, you don't have to worry about that. So there's no obnoxious jimping down there. Yeah, overall, honestly, <clears throat> I'm pretty impressed with this. Let's see, there is the what you would expect. It's gonna be really hard. Can I get something to reflect this up? Yeah, okay. So there is very good uh, skeletonization in this. And that is, like I said, something that you ha should come to expect from, from Civivi. They, they just do that. And I think the skeletonization of this looks more like This is the Ferrum Forge Stinger, and it's just made by WeCVV, and uh, it's still a slightly different pattern, but you see, same kind of concept, where they take these stainless steel liners and they just really, really heavily cut them out. And that's how they're able to get that weight down. This is so skeletonized that I'm honestly kind of surprised that it is as heavy as it is, and I think that really is just an attribute to the fact that G10 weighs a good bit and they have the thick slabs of G10. So there is a version of this knife that has um, wood scales, I think it's probably the same kind of gabersha, babinga wood, it's a type of rose, African rosewood. Um, I imagine that that one actually weighs meaningfully less just because the wood tends to weigh so much less. Um, I'll have to look up stats on that to see if that's real. That brings me to one other thing stylistically. Uh, I don't think any of the versions that they released of this make a whole heck of a lot of sense. I mean, well, no, they're fine, but I, I, I just think that they could have made better pairings. So for example, there is a 
green micarta version and the micarta that they use is like okay it's nowhere near as good as the micarta on something like this this is real micarta tm trademarked american micarta um but it's still it's good it's it's good um and that that color green you know, you know, whatever, you know, it's just a personal opinion thing. Some people really love that color green on black and they put it on a black blade. Actually, no, I think they put it on a Damascus blade. Yeah. That's the thing that really bugs me. They put a Damascus blade, which is like a, like a fancy looking blade. It, you know, that the swirly stuff is, is something that the, the market associates with kind of high end fanciness. And they put it on a micarta handle and micarta is like a rustic natural kind of like working man's grippy texture handle. And it just feels like a total mismatch to me. And then they, um, they put the wood one, they did the same thing on this. They put the wood one on a, uh, uh, an all blacked out handle uh, blade. And it just black and brown together is kind of like an obvious taboo that a lot of people know not to do. And you can pull it off. It can look good, but it's just, uh, it would have looked so much better. And so part of me, if I really loved this knife, I would go out of my way and do this again. I would buy this and I would buy the wood handle one and I would swap and do a Frankenstein and make a blend. Um, but I don't think I'm going to love this enough to want to make an ultimate version of this. I don't know if this is going to stick around for me. It's really, honestly, pretty cool. And I might keep it around as my example of a button lock and gear to the Malibu instead. Because honestly, that's the main reason why I have the Malibu. The Malibu is a perfectly great knife. And that's a kind of a weird phrase, but I almost said perfectly fine, but it's legitimately a great knife. Uh, but I don't ever see myself using it because I have so many so many knives and I know it's, I, I hate aluminum handles. And so this would give me the ability to, uh, experience and play with a button lock and use it as a reference example. Um, but at a much lower price investment, especially cause it got such a good deal. Uh, what I was going to say though, stylistically, the other thing that they did is they did black this out. And, um, since you have a blacked out handle, I think, I think it, because so it, the, if they had left all of this silver, like if they had made it the same kind of hardware as this, it would honestly look fine, if not good, because there's not like a ton of gratuitous hardware on here and it would match the same color as this. But the fact that they went all black and made everything all black, that's the key. And where I'm getting to is this logo here. So on the S35VN version, they have this version that's all kind of matted out, but on all other regular CVV knives, not just Elementums, they've got this version that has black in one spot and silver in the other spot that makes it really high contrast. And it makes it look, um, it just really draws attention to the C. And this is one of my least favorite logos, not because it's ugly, but because it's bland enough to be ugly. It's just kind of, it looks like the Cubs logo or it looks like Comic Sans a little bit to me. It's just so not graphic design. And so the less you call attention to it, the better. And so the fact that this isn't silver shiny around this drawing your attention, it makes me so incredibly happy. The fact that they went all black and committed to that, if they had done black everywhere and made that the regular CVV logo, I would be just hit. I would just be very mad about it. Um, I'm not a super all blacked out person, but it also just seems really, 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 really weird to me that if you're going to do a, a version of this knife that has an entirely blacked out handle and a version of this knife that has an entirely blacked out blade, that you wouldn't make a version that's entirely blacked out. What are they thinking? Anyway. Um, enough rambling, I think. This is legitimately a very impressive knife for, I think it comes in at about 70 bucks, but I'm like, I would say almost 100% confident you'll be able to buy these at White Mountain Knives. So if you want to save 10%, you can use code NERD10 over White Mountain Knives. A lot of folks have um, codes like that. Obviously, Kevin sent me all this stuff and he has Lefty 10 that works virtually everywhere on the internet. That's a running gag that if you can buy something somewhere, you can probably use Lefty 10 in it. Um, but yeah, I do have Nerd 10 there. Um, that isn't something that helps me out. That is something that helps you out. It just gives you 10% off. But so you can get this for what is that? Uh, $7.20 less than 72 bucks. Yep, you can do the math. For that price, I'm going to say, yeah, I think I think this is going to be an incredibly successful uh, knife for them. And I think if the, ooh, I like this form. You know, I was saying earlier that this form of fidgeting where you're having to move your thumb back and forth, I don't like as much. But this, where I can kind of keep my thumb there, 
It's not super intuitive. I'll have to figure that out. I'm going to see if I can do a, a reverse flick that keeps my thumb in the right spot. Anyway, this is, I think, going to be a very, very, very successful knife for them. If they can keep this kind of action up, I heard that the cogent isn't as good of a of an action, but if they can make this kind of action and put it on an elementum that is an actual button lock, not that stupid thing that they had that was a lot, I mean, it's not, some people really like it, but if they can put this kind of action on an actual elementum, I think they will have the, like the, the most successful knife that they've ever done. But if, but honestly, there is a, there's a lot about this that I like more than this, just in terms of how this feels in my hand. Um, I think the only thing I don't really like is the weight and the fact that this is just a little bit too jabby, a little bit too jabby looking for me. I also probably would take this off because while it works perfectly good in my particular hands, I have medium sized glove hands, which is slightly smaller than the average male hand. Um, I think that this little hook right here isn't really going to do much of anything for me in terms of keeping my hand on the blade, but it is going to really piss off some people when it lands right in the middle of their slightly larger hands pinky finger. Okay, this is a really long video and I did not expect it to be. I thought this was gonna be like a, a 10 minute short thing, but this knife is actually really pretty cool. And Kev is, like I said, a crazy person and sent me a bunch of really awesome stuff. So huge thank you to Kev and uh, thanks you all for watching. And yeah, I'll catch you guys next time.